Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Wongo. And we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video. But before we get into the reaction, because I want to say thank you to everybody out there who've been subscribing. You guys are super amazing. Thank you. We are 20,000 subscribers. We are gonna get to 30,000 and I know that we're gonna get there very soon. I feel like Before, we're halfway to 50, sorry for this thing. Yeah, we're halfway to 50 and we really want to get to 50,000 subscribers. And I know we're going to get there with your, uh, you know, help help and whatnot. Support. And yeah, yeah, support, exactly. So today we're going to react to a warning from the final prophet. So without any further ado, let's get it. The final messenger from God was sent to the world as a mercy and guidance to help improve and guide those who open their hearts and accept the truth. The actions and speech of the Prophet peace be upon him were guided by the Creator of the universe. Muslims call the traditions and actions of the Prophet peace be upon him the Sunnah. For example, something as simple as growing your beard and hair is regarded as Sunnah, and there is immense reward for every believer who follows the Sunnah with the right intentions. Today, some may grow their beard and hair for the sake of fashion, while others may do it to be more like the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The reward is based on the inner intentions, which is known only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Alim, the All-Knowing. Now, I want you to imagine for a second that you had in your possession the blueprint to success, a guide that shows exactly what you need to do to be the best version of yourself. From the very basics to the most intricate details, would you not do everything in your power to follow it? The fact is, we have this blueprint, and those who stray from it are not from the Prophet peace be upon him. In an authentic narration, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. This statement clearly highlights the importance of following the Sunnah. But Satan, the enemy of humankind, works tirelessly, day and night with his army to divert the world away from the truth. If we analyze the developing world over the past 100 years, we can see clearly how most of the world has gone in the complete opposite direction. Haram and sinfulness is celebrated and promoted by the so-called modern world. And the Sunnah is looked at like a backwards thing that has no place in modern Western civilization. We have seen footage from 100 years ago of how women in the UK were dressed. Most clothing was modest and the hair was covered, similar to how Muslim women today cover themselves. The Messenger of God peace be upon him said that a time will come when women will be clothed yet naked. This prophecy is a reality that has been made evident today. Skin-tight clothes is a modern trend that displays the entire body as though the person is naked, yet they're clothed. When the world moves away from truth and guidance, it can only lead to misguidance and self-destruction. The previous generations were completely destroyed for their sins. Not the sins people do in private, but when evil becomes prevalent and accepted by the majority. Many prophets that came to warn the people about God were often tortured and killed. In Surah Yasin, Allah tells us about the people of Yasin. He sent two prophets to guide the people, but they rejected them. Then Allah sent a third prophet to strengthen the two, but still, the people rejected the truth. When a man from amongst them came from the furthest end of the city to tell the people to follow the prophets of Allah, they killed him. And subhanAllah, he entered into paradise and said, If only my people knew. They rejected the truth and harmed those who wished to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent the angel Jibreel to him. He uprooted the main gate of their town and let out a cry that completely destroyed them. Oh, 
يعلمون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون The modern world today has exceeded the limits that have been sent by our Creator if we do not work to reverse this damage. We may reach a point of no return. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who follow the Quran and Sunnah and live our lives according to the guidance we have received. What do you think uh, <clears throat> by the warning from the final prophet? When you gave the example <coughs> of how people are wearing skin tight things, I was thinking it's like tradition. Every day we find ourselves saying, I don't have to be this tradition. This tra I don't have to do this tradition. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like I can be, I can still practice my culture, but not too much of it. At the end of the day, what, what you're doing is you're forgetting your ways, little by little. Same as this other stuff. If you're going to if you're going to say um, I accept this, and then say religiously as well to some extent I accept it like this, but this side as well I'm leaning this leaning this side, then I don't know. I feel like just like what that guy said politically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Do you understand? You can't save two masters. It's yeah. either this or this, not both things you find yourself having too much on the plate for yourself. And um, I guess the warning was just about how the future is going to be. If we got a warning from way back 1400 years ago, yeah, and it's <coughs> happening now, we're living it, we're experiencing it. And if you're not doing anything, it's going to be a point of no return. Yeah, if we don't do anything about it, we're going to forget our ways. What do you think? But is that not what is happening now? Yeah. We, uh, we we totally forgot everything about our culture. Not everyone. Yeah, not everyone, but I mean the majority, to be honest. Now, look. Um, first of all, I didn't know that the uh, the English were covering themselves back in the days. <laughs> I mean, their dress were close to the Muslim sisters that we're seeing them today. But I mean, it's they they don't have to cover their heads. But if you're into filming. Yeah? Yeah. But if you look at the way they were dressed back then, those skirts of theirs were quite long. Yes, but we preserved. saw a film over here. We saw them covering their head. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So meaning that, that's where we, that's where we, not like that's where we started from, but maybe that was like a kind of transition that was there before. For them then? Yes. What then. about the rest of the world? Yeah. We have to also consider <clears throat> that. I think we, uh, I don't know if we're doing... Because us in Africa, what was our culture anyway? You know, it's thinking really, about it. Because we've, it's like we've grown up thinking we have no that, established Because culture. I know that <laughs> goes must be crazy. You know, you, you see those people wearing, cover, covering themselves. And then there's a tribe in, is it Namibia, that they loosen themselves. They what? They loosen the, themselves. Like, I you mean, mean they don't dress. Yeah. Yeah, they're there. You know, so, so now, what do we talk about that? I mean, if that was our culture, why can't we maintain that even today? Oh, how how did we get to that point? Was our culture like that or it was even more advanced than what it was at that time? You understand? So I don't know. Did we used to have long hair but then this is used to have and then another thing was they mentioned the long hair yeah? <coughs> yes and the beard i wanted to talk about that guy what's his name from the bible from the bible the book moses the one with the long hair but it was cut off Samson. by a woman Samson. yes if i don't know maybe i'm just thinking too much islam is saying keep your hair yeah and then at the point we also had this christian person have his hair kept which he is, was warned never to cut it. Samson. Yeah. yeah, we don't think that maybe our hair was meant to be to grow out. Of course. And not Listen. these potato cuts we people do. Listen, I mean, I mean, 
that's a really good point our hair is meant to grow we're not meant to cut our hair do you understand it's it's like our our extension our nervous system uh, our 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 nerve extension for like for example we have nervous system in our bodies that react to touch and all this kind of stuff our hair also acts the same it's like our antenna to maybe download information maybe sense things out there i remember we were reacting on something and then i say that back in the days they were wondering why uh there's certain group of people that could actually sense the war before it actually happened you know and this certain group of people had long hair so now they did an experiment so they cut their hair off no they brought people who so they cut their hair so <coughs> they cut their hair off and apparently they couldn't sense anything so now when when they did that that's when they realized how huh, so there's something to do with the hair do you understand even back in the days our women um why is it that women have more intuition compared to men even back in those days you know women were more like sorry to say this i don't know if people like you know the witches they were um they were doing some rituals and what and they could make it even much better than men do you understand because of their long falling hair you know so it, it was like you have you having a different sort of energy you having a so so now it's like a sort of power yeah it's it's like a power even if, even the story of samson i mean if you look at it critically i mean you 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 just connect it to a point where samson hair was cut down and then the strength automatically just stopped you know so what does that even went mean away. yeah went away what does that even mean i mean it gives you um a narration that samson was stronger with the hair so imagine if we kept our hair like that longer and then trust me some of us could be like levitating or thinking having some amazing um you know thoughts or even more wisdom and whatnot mm -hmm. and then you wonder why is it that they introduced all this cutting of hair in africa in the early night not even early 90s in the early 50s 19 uh, yes in the early 90s you know they're saying if you, if you have long hair you have to cut it down you have to look neat for you to uh be in an office or work at a certain poor place so you find that everyone was cutting down their hair even in schools you cut down your hair why for what reason do you understand while our brothers and sisters out there they understand the uh importance of keeping your hair that long you understand mm -hmm. even you if you see someone with a long beard what does it even tell you not not this um, i mean an old man with long beard it gives you a sense of wisdom you know you think so yeah it gives you a sense of there's something that this man is hiding like there's something that, I mean there's something this man has to offer to us that's why all the prophets had long beards and maybe long hair you understand because it's, it's, it's a sense of wisdom it's a sense of knowledge as uh, a sense of living you understand like he has lived that long to to even grow the hair like that meaning that he has seen that much anyway um yeah uh that's that i have much to say but that's that uh if there is anything you guys want us to react to drop the link down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next reaction video and deuces right on time today huh? yeah.